and welcome to Metro Arts. I'm your host, Cheryl Coonan. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we have the founder of Pony Ride, Philip Cooley, and the organization's executive director, Kate Boarding, Carrie Miyake, the owner and director from Oakland Regional Ballet, and we'll open the show with a singer-songwriter. Here's Detroit's own Megan Hermes performing her new single, Steal My Crown. I got these bad boys telling me that I could get it, but I wouldn't let them hit it anyway. Cause they do it so good, then they hurt me so bad, and I don't need another heartbreak. You can stay from afar, flash your money in your cars, I ain't impressed, I get it on my own. I'm a little rich chick with chains on my hips, pleased to be the star of the show. Awesome performance. That was great. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Can you introduce the band to everyone? Yep. There's Rio on drums, and there's Ken on guitar, Brandon on keys, and Reggie on bass. Great. So you started your career as a dancer, and you traveled the world performing with some pretty big names. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Um, it was pretty amazing, to be honest with you. Um, I think dancing for a lot of big um, musicians is really helped morph me into a musician myself, just seeing what happens behind the scenes and you know, taking notes from some of the best. So. And who were some of those people that you danced with? Um, I danced on tour with Charlie Wilson for two years. I also danced for Mariah Carey, Jesse McCartney, recently Big Sean, um, and the Goo Goo Dolls. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. So tell us about your record label, Gypsyland Records. Um, Gypsyland Records, I just started this summer. Um, it's safe to say I kind of started it on accident, but <laughs> it was a great accident. Um, 
it's kind of my backbone as an artist because I, I hadn't been offered anything from a label that I couldn't do for myself. So I just said, well, why don't I just start one of my own? So sure. I did. And then here we are. We have Gypsyland Records now. Very cool. Yeah. Thank so you. So what's next for you? Um, I'm actually relocating to Los Angeles. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very so that's near next. future? Yeah. Um, actually, I'll be gone by the new year. So... Well, good luck yeah, with that. Thank you so much. Where can we go to find more about you and your music? You can go to MeganHermez.com. It's Megan with a Y, M-E-G-Y-N-H-E-R-M-E-Z.com. Um, Facebook slash Megan Hermes. You can Google me on, or Google me or go on YouTube or, you know, what have you. Awesome. Thank yeah. you again for joining us today. Thanks again, Cheryl. I appreciate it. Sure. Up next, it's Megan Hermes with Yellow Brick Road. You're watching Metro Arts Detroit, produced at Wayne State University.
Joining us now are Pony Ride founder Philip Cooley and Executive Director Kate Boarding. Hi, thanks for joining us. Hello. Hi, thanks for having us. Sure. Um, so tell me a little bit about Pony Ride. What is it and where did the idea come from? Well, I guess I can take that as the founder. Um, we bought a building for $100,000 and um, you know, it was, it was a beautiful building, 30,000 square feet approximately. And it was part of the foreclosure crisis. Um, we bought it because I needed a home and a place for my wood shop. But we didn't feel comfortable being the only ones benefiting from it. So we invited the community in and said, what should this building be? What should the rest of the space be? And what we found is um, people just said what, whatever they were passionate about. You know, they said it should be this or that um, in line with their passion. So we, did, we decided to just say, let's let the community, if we want to be an inclusive space, you can't tell the community who they should be. You should let them be who they are. So we didn't set out to open a hip hop dance studio, for instance. They were just the second people who came to us, so we said yes. And uh, you know, the coolest thing is everyone kind of has helped out in that process, build their own spaces and build each other's spaces. It's a big community. Great, so you've got many different types of artists in the space. Can yep. you, um, first let me back up actually, where did the name Pony Ride come from? I'm sure everyone wants to know and is curious. Yeah, no, we really just wanted to bring people back to the time that they're a child, they have less hang-ups, they're more creative, um, and it really just, you're willing to take a risk, everybody loves a pony ride, so um, it's really just, if you started a new business, you might fail, but that's okay, you get back up and dust off your knees and jump back on the pony. So I like that. So, pony ride, it comes from that. What a great analogy. Um, so you were mentioning some of the tenants that you have. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of artists you have at the space? Yeah, so we didn't want to put all of our eggs in like one basket. It's, technology is really popular right now, right? And we, we love tech and think it needs support and, and it needs to grow. Um, but you know, we can't just throw all of this manufacturing infrastructure out either. And so putting people in a silo, a tech silo or a manufacturing silo or an art silo, whatever it is, um, we don't think it's really healthy for the growth and understanding, like for their broadening of the, the minds of our tenants. So we really push like diversity in every sense of the, you know, so it's definitely age and gender and race and these things, of course, but it's also about like points in your career and different skill sets. So when uh, we call them collisions instead of collaborations because it's so sloppy, but like when a boat maker works with a hip hop dance studio, that's fun things that you would never think of until it happens. Right, very cool. Now I know part of your mission is to offer inexpensive space to your tenants. Do you have any examples of an artist who's working with you that has a creative space now that maybe wouldn't have otherwise have had anywhere to do their work? Yeah, I think a perfect example would be Eric, and, um, mm -hmm. if you want to tell his story. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, he came to us and he took two years off of work. He was a salesperson. Um, and actually, the jeans that I'm wearing right now, Detroit Denim is the name of the company. Um, and so, yeah, it was about you know giving him the freedom and the space to to test it. And things are going great. And he's, you know, he's growing. He can't keep up with the demand. And, um, you know, had it been a traditional, I think, rent agreement, I think he would have probably closed his doors and not been able to get over the hump. And even like Stukenborg Press, it's funny, they to walk in his space and to see how he can teach more classes, he can, um, you know, do more work because he had about, about a fifth, uh, uh, maybe even a tenth of the space that he has now when he was in New York. And everything else was in storage and he couldn't really put the things out there that he needed right. to. So that's it's great. That's awesome. It's, you're really offering a, a life-changing thing for people. Yeah, well, you know, that's the thing for us. It's about participation. Um, like we don't do anything all that special there. It's, you know, what we feel is that we're more successful helping others by just saying, you can do this yourself, go for it. When you give people access to time and space, they'll, they'll save themselves. Like Detroiters don't need me, they don't need Kate. They, they need to just be allowed to participate. Right, now you mentioned Stukenborg Press. We have a clip here produced by one of your tenants called Order and Other about Stukenborg Press. Can you tell us about the clip? Yeah, I think I love the video um, because it one, it represents the passion of the people that are in there producing things. Brian is one of the most passionate people I've ever met and one of the most friendly, great, you know, just givers. We we expect our tenants, since they get a 75% rent subsidy, we expect them to give back to the community, not necessarily as much as Brian has. I mean, about 50% of his work is pro bono stuff for nonprofit organizations, different artists that he's helping out. Um, and, and just folks that can't necessarily always afford it, he'll teach them how to do letterpress if, if they can't afford to hire him. And so 
he's very much in line with the, the tenants that are there, but also Order and Other, the people that made that video, uh, incredibly talented. And, you know, when they m shot that video, it became, I think, the featured video on Vimeo. Um, and the first day, 18,000 people viewed that. And, I, you know, it's great that they did that. And they never, and Brian would have never asked for it, but a year ahead of, of the video, um, Brian stayed up to three in the morning um, working on all the graphics for their Shinola presentation, which was Order Another's first client, and stayed up to three in the morning making these graphics, doing hand printed materials for them, and they got the job. And it was uh, largely because, you know, Brian made them as professional as possible in that, in, in that presentation, in that pitch. Great. Well, let's take a look at the clip. Awesome. My mom told me that if I can find something I love to do and do it to the best of my ability and learn as much about it as I can, eventually I'll be able to make a living doing that. She didn't mean do something to make money. Do something you love and eventually you'll be able to make your way through the world doing that thing. Making a piece of art by default is for other people, I believe. Like, there is no, I'm just making this for myself. You can get a lot of pleasure out of the activity, but to actually have it become a work of art, it has to get shared with someone else. As soon as you release it into the world, like, it's going to be for other people. The more and more we get away from doing things by our hands, the more important it is for me to share the pleasure of that experience. I know how excited I got the first time I learned how to make a print. It's like having someone come in and like make something by hand is a really rich thing. It's not a common thing to have a print shop like around the corner. You can't just like, hey, I'm gonna go down to the print shop and make something unless that print shop happens to be there. So I really want to be that print shop that people can go to and posters for the potluck, or make posters for the yard sale, or make business cards, or make invitations to the most important day of your life. I've spent a long time like not making enough money doing this, and I've also had little waves where I'm like making plenty, but I really take it to heart that what she said, find it and just pursue it as hard as you can, and it'll eventually make sense of itself. Wow, that was an awesome video. He's an inspiring guy. Yeah, so what are the goals for the future of Pony Ride? Um, I think we have a vision to expand and go into other neighborhoods, but we really want to create a roadmap so that these neighborhoods can incorporate this model and, and design or Pony Ride that reflects their community. Um, so I think we're just being open-minded at, at this point. Um, yeah. and and empowering people to do this, because we can't do this in every neighborhood, so we just want to share this model. And, Ultimately, they can learn from our mistakes and successes, and we can learn from them as they do it. That's awesome. Such a great thing you're doing and a great example you're setting for other communities. Uh, where can people go if they want to learn more about Pony Ride and get involved? Well, you can definitely find us on the internet, um, PonyRide.org. We have an Instagram, a Twitter, a Facebook. We try to utilize all those social medias, but also just come and visit us. Anthology Coffee is open um, every day, 9 to 4, so you can access the uh, building that way. 1401 Vermont Street. Great. In so lots Town. of ways to get in touch. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Sure. You're watching Metro Arts, produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. Support for the Pony Ride segment was provided by the Coleman Foundation.
we'd like to welcome the owner and director of Oakland Regional Ballet, Carrie Miatke, to Wayne State and Metro Arts. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so we'd like to have you start out by telling us about the educational mission of your studio. Um, we like to train well-trained ballerinas um, in a non-competitive, nurturing environment, which means you know no competition um, amongst each other or no competitive dancing. We, we like to train our dancers to um, perform. Great. And you mentioned ballet. Is that kind of the focus of your studio? Because you do offer other classes, right? Yes, we do offer other classes. Ballet is the base and the core of all dance. It, it helps you um, when you want to take another style of dance. You've already got that base. We do offer jazz, tap, hip-hop, and um, a little bit of lyrical and contemporary as well. But would you say the majority of your students do participate in ballet, or is it kind of a combination of the classes? I would say practically all of my students currently do ballet first and then add the others as supplements. It helps them with the other yes. dances. Cool, yes. that's great. One of the, the themes on your website is it's never too late to start dancing. Yeah. Tell us about that and um, a little bit about the age range of your dancers. Yeah, um, we start them off at two. I have ballet babies. Uh, they work on creative movement. We work with props. Um, they do they learn classroom etiquette, working with other kids, listening to a teacher. It's just really good for them to move up from there. And then um, through adult, I have you know, students in their mid-40s, mid to late 40s that are very passionate about ballet now. So all ages. And do you have to have any previous experience, like if you wanted to um, join as all. an adult? I have students that have started with me as adults and have grown a passion for it. So that kind of goes back to your non-competitive environment. Yes. Because if you've never done it, it can be a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. That's true. So yes. it's, it's nice to know that it's, it's a good place to go and you don't have to be yeah. nervous. Yeah, and no judgment. Right. Yeah. So another thing you stress on your website is the affordability that you yeah. strive for. I know dance can get very expensive, so talk a little bit it about is. that. Um, and that's another reason why we don't do competitive dancing. It can get very expensive. Um, I try to keep the cost of tuition down in that way, um, but also on costumes. Uh, we do two shows a year, so helping parents, you know, get their kids into doing something and be, being passionate about something, it helps to keep the cost down right. on those Those things. costumes do get, expensive, do get expensive, I'm sure, especially yes. if someone has multiple kids in your class. Yes. Um, you do two productions a year. Can we you do. talk about those? We do a Nutcracker in December. We have auditions for the ballet company, and from there, the, the ballet company gets the main roles in, in the Nutcracker. And then we do a performance in May. The themes vary there, but we've done everything from Alice in Wonderland to original ballet works written by some of my teachers and, you know, to just a basic spring recital theme sometimes too, so. Oh, fun, yeah. very nice. And all of your students participate in both of those? They do. Okay. My two-year-olds do too, the ballet babies. They, they steal the show. I bet, <laughs> I bet it's adorable. Yeah. Um, where are you located? I'm right in downtown Lake Orion, 12 North Broadway, um, right in the art district. And you yourself have been dancing for 25 years, yeah, right? So I started at 11. Okay, tell us a little bit about that yeah. path and the career that you've had. I had a friend that, um, you know, we signed up for dance together, and, you know, I thank her for that because I fell in love with it that day, the very first day, and knew that that's what I wanted to do. So it took me, you know, through high school dancing and into college, and I earned a Bachelor of Arts from Oakland University in dance. And in my travels, you know, with, with college and learning and going to Chicago and New York and um, conventions and, and auditions and dancing with other dancers, that my passion really lied in education of dance. So that brought me back, to, you know, to my college saying I wanted to do, I uh, own a studio. You knew teach. you wanted to teach. Knew I wanted to do it. So that's what I started working towards. Okay. And you've had your studio for how many um, years? I'm going into my ninth year. Great. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you ever miss performing? Since now I do teach. still perform some in some of my shows, oh, which great. is fun. Yeah. Um, I normally play the Nutcracker in the show um, in December, so that's fun. Um, and my kids like to see me perform. The parents like to see me perform. But, it, you know, anything else outside of the studio, not 
really have time for. I'm busy educating dancers. Right, yeah. right. Do you have other teachers that help you with? I do. I have class? one other teacher that helps me. We have a we're a one room studio and it's perfect. It's a it's a good um, close environment. Good. Friendly. How many students do you have? Today? I have a, a little over sixty right now. Okay. Yeah. Good size. Um, if someone's interested in learning more, where can they go? Um, they can visit our website, OaklandRegionalBallet.com, or like us on Facebook. Okay, great, OaklandRegionalBallet.com. Yes. Awesome. Well, good luck with everything. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're watching Metro Arts Detroit, produced at the Midtown Studio on the Wayne State campus. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed today's show. I'd like to thank our guests, Megan Hermes, Philip Cooley, Kate Boarding, and Carrie Miyake for joining us today. I'm your host at Metro Art, Cheryl Coonan, reminding you to foster your own creativity and always support the arts wherever you go.